On this channel, we frequently talk about human activity in space, the future, and what might await us in the universe at large. But this channel also casts a wider net to subjects like paleontology, science fiction, and even history. To study human history is to study the activities of a civilization, and from that, we might be able to imagine what alien civilizations might be like. But in our civilization, we stand at the precipice of a new golden age of archaeology. New techniques and further research promise the possibilities of major discoveries in archaeology in the coming years, so here are 10 amazing future archaeological discoveries. Number 10. The Herculaneum Scrolls In 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius, near what is now modern-day Naples in Italy, erupted, burying several Roman cities deeply in ash. These cities include Pompeii which is arguably the premier Roman archaeological site, having captured a snapshot of a day of life in the Roman Empire. But it may have captured more than just buildings and artifacts. It may have captured a treasure trove of literature that until now was lost to history. The find came in the nearby town of Herculaneum, which had been subject to severe pyroclastic flows from Vesuvius. The high temperature wall of gas instantly carbonized organic material, and in one villa, it carbonized an entire library of scrolls. This villa, thought originally to have belonged to a relative of Julius Caesar, has yielded the carbonized remains of over 1,800 scrolls. Efforts to unroll the scrolls and read them have been made in the past, but not to much success. That's until today. With modern equipment, it has recently become possible to read the burned scrolls without unrolling them, promising to resurrect a large amount of ancient literature. Most of the literature so far relates to Epicurean philosophy, but much more work remains as over 1800 scrolls have been recovered. More, it's thought the library may have a lower level that hasn't been excavated that could hold even more scrolls. Volcanoes are usually associated with destroying things, but in this rare case, it preserved something we once thought was lost forever. Number 9. Hidden Mayan Cities When one visits a Mayan archaeological site in Mexico or Central America, they are full of amazing pyramids and buildings, unique specifically to the ancient Mayans. While these sites are certainly impressive, they're also full of tourists, attracting many thousands of people per year. Given these sites, such as Chichen Itza and Yucatan are so well known, it might be tempting to think that archaeologists have discovered all there is as far as Mayan cities go. This is not the case. In 2018 alone, thousands of new sites, and even entire cities still covered in jungle, were found using aerial mapping. None of these are yet excavated, but it has forced a rethink on just how many people were living in Central America at the height of Mayan civilization. It's now thought that as many as 10 million people were living there at a given time. Imagine what will be found as these new sites are excavated and studied by archaeologists. Number 8. The Baltic Shipwrecks In 1961, the Swedish warship Vasa emerged from the waters of Stockholm Harbor after having sunk in 1628. The ship, which is now housed in a museum, was found in an extraordinary state of preservation. Typically, shipwrecks don't last long on the ocean floor due to the presence of ship-boring worms that destroy wood. But in the case of the Vasa, the waters it was preserved in were too cold for shipworms. This has created a preservation zone in the Baltic Sea that contains a treasure trove of perfectly preserved shipwrecks going back centuries. In addition to the Vasa, found to date are the warships Cronin and Mars, both of which are preserved not as complete wrecks, but as they were at the last moment of the battles that sunk them, with both ships going down after their powder magazines exploded. Any number of preserved wrecks still remain on the floor of the Baltic Sea. One interesting recent find has been the location of a trading ship known as the Vrau Maria. The ship is in an almost perfect state of preservation, but what is unknown is the condition of the cargo. The ship was carrying a collection of paintings on their way to Russia, having been purchased by Catherine the Great, including lost paintings from the Dutch Golden Age of Art. It remains to be seen if anything remains of those paintings. Number 7. The Arctic and the Franklin Expedition The Baltic Sea isn't the only place where cold water can preserve ships. It just happens to be a place where there was a lot of traffic and warfare over the centuries from countries like Denmark, Russia, and Sweden. But in reality, the Arctic itself does hold some potential for preserved shipwreck discoveries. Chief among these is what exactly happened to the Franklin expedition to explore the northern polar regions that left England in 1845. Much has been written and many YouTube videos made about the Franklin expedition and how it ended, which any way you cut it, it was bad. But one area neglected regarding this expedition were the ships themselves. 
Franklin's ships were British Royal Navy vessels specially reinforced for Arctic ice conditions. For over 150 years, these ships lay undiscovered, but thought to possibly be preserved somewhere in Canada's far north waters. These ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, have recently been found. HMS Terror is a historically important ship in its own right, having once been a bomb vessel present at the War of 1812 bombardment of Fort McHenry, which Francis Scott Key wrote what would become the U.S. National Anthem. His bombs bursting in air very well may have come from HMS Terror. But within these ships, which have not been thoroughly explored, may lie answers to the fate of the Franklin Expedition, or at least part of it. HMS Terror was found far south of where it was expected to be, suggesting that it may have been manned again at some point as the expedition fell apart, and that members of the expedition may have attempted to head south. What we will find in that ship may add a new dimension of mystery to the expedition, but if HMS Erebus and Terror are preserved in the Arctic, what else might be preserved in those waters? Number 6. Alpine Discoveries So long as the temperature is right, ice can remain frozen for very long periods on Earth. Indeed, we can look at thousands of years of climate history by studying ice cores. But that also remains the case for animals and even humans encased in that ice. In 1991, in the mountains of the border between Italy and Austria, a frozen human corpse was found melting out of the ice. At the time, no one knew how old this body actually was, though it was generally assumed to either have been someone lost in the mountains in the mid-20th century or even a lost soldier from the First World War. But that changed as the objects surrounding the body were found, which included a copper axe, a quiver full of arrows, and a stone-tipped knife. It soon became clear that this was a very ancient body, and as it turned out, this man has been dead for 5,300 years. Much has been learned from this body in the meantime, which is preserved in a specially designed freezer. He had tattoos that seemed to correlate with health problems he had, suggesting that tattooing was used as a form of therapy, something not unheard of in other cultures. He was also apparently murdered, having died from blood loss sustained through an arrow wound, which was found to still be embedded in his upper body. One wonders what his last moments, all that long ago, were like. But he illustrates something. The corpse managed to survive and mummify for a very long time. While at times he seems to have thought of it and froze again, he fundamentally remained intact along with the items he was carrying, and even his last meal. At any moment, who knows what else might thaw out of the ice and give us a glimpse into our ancient past. Number 5. The Tomb of the First Emperor of China Perhaps one of the greatest archaeological finds in human history remains completely unexcavated, and may remain that way for years. It is the tomb of the first emperor of a unified China, who ruled until his death in 220 BCE. Part of this tomb is quite famous and includes the terracotta army that once formed a part of the tomb complex, but the actual tomb itself hasn't ever been opened. But there are historical accounts of what might have been in there. The emperor is said to be buried in the center of a large map of China, complete with models on the floor of the tomb. The rivers of China were represented by flowing mercury, and indeed soil in the area does seem to have elevated mercury levels. Whether the historical accounts of this tomb are correct or not, given the existence of the terracotta army, whatever is in there is sure to be extremely important from an archaeological standpoint. But when it will be excavated is an open question. After all, who would want to disturb the rest of this ancient warlord emperor? Number 4. Finding Alexander While he loomed large in life, in death, Alexander the Great didn't fare so well. We know that in the Egyptian city of Alexandria, a tomb was built where his preserved body sat for centuries. In fact, one account is that when in Egypt, Julius Caesar kissed the corpse and accidentally broke Alexander's nose off in the process. But what happened to the tomb and the body of Alexander in the centuries after remains a mystery. Search for the remains of the tomb are ongoing, and there are candidate sites for it, but nothing yet definitive. It's anyone's guess what happened to the mummy. However, one theory, while unlikely, posits that when the Venetians invaded Egypt and carted back the body purported to be that of St. Mark, they were actually given the wrong body, leading to two tombs for the saint, one in Egypt, one in Venice. It has been suggested that the stand-in body the Egyptians handed over to the Venetians may actually have been Alexander the Great's mummy, but Egypt has no shortage of mummies, so this scenario seems rather unlikely. Number 3. Egypt's Missing Tombs While Egypt arguably stands at the top of the list when one thinks about amazing archaeological discoveries, in some ways the rich archaeological heritage of that country has barely been explored. 
Discoveries like the tombs in the Valley of the Kings, and most famously Howard Carter's discovery of Tutankhamun's virtually undisturbed tomb, might seem like a thing of the past that will never come again, but it might. This can happen any number of ways. Entire necropolises full of mummies have been found in recent years, yielding information on the everyday people of ancient Egypt. Also found recently are tombs of priests and nobles, and there are still missing kings, and the possibility that known tombs, such as that of Tutankhamun, may still have unexplored hidden chambers, so it remains entirely possible that the most amazing archaeological discoveries that Egypt holds still lay in the future to be discovered. Number 2. The Black Sea Shipwrecks Cold waters like the Baltic and Arctic aren't the only places where shipwrecks can preserve perfectly underwater. In fact, the relatively balmy Black Sea might actually be better at it to the point that the bodies of their victims may also be perfectly preserved, even after centuries. This is a relatively new area for underwater archaeologists to explore, only really beginning a few years ago during an expedition by Dr. Robert Ballard. It has been hypothesized that wooden ships would preserve in the depths of the Black Sea due to a certain level of it being anoxic. In fact, about 90% of its water is anoxic, meaning it's very low on oxygen to the point that it's basically a dead zone. As a result, things preserve. In addition to shipwrecks, Ballard found evidence of ancient shorelines, opening the possibility that the former shores of the Black Sea were inhabited. This is interesting because the Black Sea as we know it is recent. It's thought that during the last ice age, it was a freshwater lake, unconnected to the Mediterranean. How it became the modern Black Sea isn't yet understood, but one hypothesis is that a catastrophic inflow of seawater into the Black Sea might have occurred just over 7,000 years ago, possibly obliterating human settlements and perhaps even inspiring some flood myths. But in regards to the ships, it's anyone's guess what might be down there. To date, late Roman, Byzantine, and ancient Greek period ships have been found, in addition to Ottoman period vessels. But there could be much more. The sea was plied by much more ancient peoples as well, and we have no records of ships lost in the Black Sea in the ancient world. It's easy to imagine Roman war galleys, medieval Genoese ships during that odd time in history when the Italian city of Genoa ruled the Crimea, or even ancient Greek shipwrecks that could contain anything from classical masterpieces of statuary to items like the famed Antithecara mechanism, just presumably better preserved. And the possibility exists that we may find preserved remains of people as ancient as the Iceman. Number 1. Exoarchaeology And just when you thought I wouldn't mention something about space in a video, here comes our final entry. Archaeology has, up until this point, been concerned with the activities of civilizations here on Earth, but it seems unlikely that our planet is special in some way, and it may be that there are many other civilizations present in the Milky Way. That possibility opens up the door for the advent of exoarchaeology. There are two ways that artifacts of past alien civilizations might come to light. The more obvious is if we spread out into space and find a planet that has or once had intelligent life on it. Exoarchaeology in that context would be to study that civilization's past, providing they allow us to, but it's not the only way we might find an artifact of an alien civilization. The other is by looking at our own solar system. It could be that someone left something here, perhaps for us to find intentionally, such as a von Neumann or other such type probe. It might also come in the form of an altered asteroid that at some point had been mined by someone. Still more could be interstellar objects passing through the solar system or captured by it that could be collected at certain locations. It's possible that aliens produce trash, and that trash circulates around the Milky Way, much like trash here on Earth ends up everywhere. But among the most interesting archaeological sites are dumps, where people in the past conveniently concentrated artifacts. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, host of Event Horizon, where each week on this channel we explore the mysteries of science, futurism, and anything we think would be interesting with content every Thursday, and random standalone content when we run across things we think you'll enjoy. Thanks again, and see you Thursday.